Snyder High School, today we're ready for discussion number two. Discussion number two is child abuse, child sexual abuse discussion. Today, my co-host is? Ms. Schroyer. And I'm Mr. Hissong, principal of Snyder High School. All right, Mr. Hissong, um, during our last conversation that we had, we talked about bullying and how to respond to that in our school. Um, today's topic of abuse um, and sexual abuse is a little more sensitive um, for, and a little bit harder for people to talk about. So we are going to really try to raise awareness and empower our students and our staff to have conversations that are very necessary if someone's in this situation. So today our goal is to educate our students on how to identify different forms of abuse and how to seek help. We're letting all of our students know that abuse is a very serious matter and we are here for them. When we talk about the abuse of a child, we need to remember that it is not only the act of causing serious injury or harm to a child, it is also failing to report that serious injury or harm or just being a, stand, a person standing by and failing to act to prevent it. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the different forms of abuse. We also will talk about neglect at this time. So when we talk about neglect, um, as a parent, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility that's required by law to provide um, some basic needs for our students and our children. Um, this includes food, shelter, medical attention when necessary, um, and also education. There, um, and then another form of, a form of abuse is physical abuse, which is um, when there's intentional harm towards um, a child, which results in bruising, cuts, um, broken bones, even possibly broken bones. So um, emotional is another form of abuse. And emotional is um, the repeated use of harmful words or threats that really seriously impair a student's emotional um, state. And then sexual, so this is a big part of our presentation today. So um, this is inappropriate sexual interactions, um, but it's not limited to actual physical touch. It can range from touching to actual sexual intercourse. It um, can include digital forms um, of abuse through pornography or exploitation or sexting. Um, basically, under the law, children cannot legally consent to sexual activity, so therefore these behaviors are illegal. Um, so we're gonna watch a short video to help further the, uh, and explain uh, why we are talking about this very important issue today. My name is Erin Marin, and when I was a young child, I was sexually abused. And it was done by people I knew and trusted. I was six years old, but I could tell you the details of what happened over 20 years ago as if it happened yesterday. The closet doors open, the toys on the floor, and one thing I'll never forget, he looked at me and said, this is our little secret. If you tell anybody, no one will believe you. When I was 11 years old, it happened again, this time by a trusted family member. And I went home and began writing about it in my childhood diary. And for two and a half years, I filled that diary, not letting anybody know the horrors I was enduring. The secret is killing me and I have to tell someone. What if he is right and no one believes me? How do I make him stop? If you are out there, God, please help me. And it wasn't until my little sister came to me and said the words I will never forget. Brian's gross. I remember looking at her and saying, he's doing it to you too? The very next day we told our parents. I thought because the abuse ended that life was gonna get so much easier. But the nightmares and flashbacks began to consume me, haunt me. And I just remember being so angry and I eventually had this turning point of confronting one of my abusers in a five-page letter. It was angry and hate-felt. Never in a million years would have thought I would get a response back. But five days later, I got one. I'm sorry for what I did to you a long time ago. My actions weren't thought out. I was confused and disoriented. I wish I had never hurt you the way that I did. I am sorry for the past, and I hope you can forgive me. But if you cannot, I understand. I am sorry. But then I began to realize that I was allowing that anger, that hatred, that bitterness to control my life. And that's when I made that decision. I said, I'm going to forgive him and do something positive with this. I want to go out there and help other people who carry the same shame, the same secrets that I did, and allow them to find their voice. That's why I created Aaron's Law, 
requiring sexual abuse prevention education in our public schools. Teaching kids the difference between safe touch, unsafe touch. Safe secrets, unsafe secrets. Aaron's Law has been passed now in 26 states and pending in 24. I've made it my life mission to get Aaron's Law passed in every single state. I don't want another generation, another century of children to not be educated on this very important issue. We teach children stranger danger, tornado drills, bus drills, fire drills, say no to drugs, but we teach nothing on sexual abuse. As a society, we sweep it under the rug, look the other way, and think it's not gonna happen to us. Parents, you need to know how to talk to your kids about sexual abuse, the warning signs to look for, and the proper way to handle it if your child does disclose, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. And kids, if this has ever happened to you, this is not your fault. You're not to blame, and you need to tell somebody. There are safe places for you to go. Go to tlc.com slash be the voice to educate yourself on sexual abuse, to get the support you need and help pass Aaron's law in every state. The National Sexual Assault Hotline provides free, safe, and confidential help 24 seven by phone at 800-656-HOPE or online at rain.org. Just as the video pointed out, you are not alone. Please realize that last year alone, there were over 7.4 million reports of child abuse. 7.4 million, and that only includes those reports that actually were reported. That doesn't include the number of, of situations that may have gone unreported or, or maybe people weren't comfortable, maybe they didn't think it was defined as, as child abuse or child sexual abuse, so they didn't even tell anyone. So 7.4 million cases alone last year that were reported. So once again, you are not alone. There are reasons that sometimes folks won't step up and they won't report. One of the reasons is that they're shamed. They, they think for some reason, somehow, they may have caused this to happen, and that's not true. That is not true at all. At no time should you ever feel ashamed or you sh should you feel guilty for reporting this type of situation. We want you to come forward and we want you to be comfortable telling us that a situation has occurred and you're not comfortable with it and you want someone to know so someone can help you. Another reason students don't want to come forward is because they're afraid. There is never a reason to be afraid. Once you arrive at Snyder High School, you're protected. You're protected by us. You're protected by the officers who serve our school. You're protected by the administrators and the counselors who serve you. You're protected by the teachers that you're with each and every day. Their responsibility is to make sure that they protect your confidentiality and that we protect you from any future abuse. So make sure that you look for us, you seek us out, and allow us to be there for you. The other reason is it's because it's harmful. It's harmful enough that you had to go through the sexual abuse or you had to go through the abuse itself. Now it's even more harmful because if you don't report it, it's just going to continue to antagonize upon itself and become even worse because now physically your body starts fighting back against it because you want to be able to tell somebody, you want to be able to share, you want to be able to explain, you want to be able to, to seek someone to help you, but you won't do it. And as a result, eating disorders occur, you begin to self-harm, you begin to use drugs, alcohol, all types of self-destructive behavior start to evolve as a result of what's occurred to you. The best way for us to be able to help you so that those things don't occur is for you to be able to come to us and allow us to help you. Okay, so I'll touch a little bit again on why teens don't tell. And this, um, some of these things are very similar to our bullying presentation that we talked about reasons why students don't report that. Um, we we want to make sure that students understand that we know that this is a very sensitive topic as well. This is um, not something that's easy for students to come talk to us about, and we want you to know that we'll make the environment and the situation as comfortable as possible, knowing that we are there to listen to you um, and not place judgment. We, we aren't there to investigate what happened, to question you um, or your intentions. It's basically our job to listen and advocate for you as a student. Um, we can't promise that things won't get a little worse before they get better. We aren't going to make promises like that. Uh, we know that this will be a difficult journey with some really hard conversations, but we promise to be supportive and um, provide a caring, um, sensitive ear and listening environment for you to talk through 
the issues that have happened. Um, we also will promise to treat you like a hero. This is a really, really difficult thing to come forward with, and um, we want you to know that it takes a lot of strength, and we recognize that. So speaking up for yourself and not letting this um, be your secret anymore that can help lift some of that burden that you carry. That's a good point, Mr. Schroyer. Taking a stand for yourself. You are your best advocate, and if you don't fight for you, don't expect others unless you're willing to step up and say something to someone. You have to know that we're here to serve you. You have to know that you can trust us, and you have to know that we will fight for you, we'll represent you, we'll stand beside you, we'll counsel you, we'll do whatever we have to do to keep you safe. Um, and as school counselors, we see, obviously we prefer that you come and tell us um, in private um, alone, but if you find it easier that, um, to bring a friend with you, then we welcome that as well. So if you have to tell a friend, um, then they can help you with a plan to come meet with us because we know that it's a difficult situation and um, we'd rather you tell a friend than no one. Another option is going to be calling a hotline number. We're going to share some hotline numbers here in just a few minutes where it's a number of hotline numbers that you can call and that you can reach out to and that folks will be able to help you. Yes. Yeah, so, and if ever in danger and you just don't know what to do, um, we just tell students to call 911 if it's an emergency situation. Okay, so I spoke a little bit about friends and how friends can help. Um, we find, again, that many times it is a friend that will maybe come to us because the, the student that is in the victim situation, they just don't have that, that strength to bring it to us as the adult. So if a friend comes to you, we want you to listen without judgment. Um, we want you to really stress the fact that, that your friend is, is strong and encourage them through this process. Um, we want you to try to talk them into sharing it with a trusted adult, but if they don't feel comfortable with that, offer to go with them to do that. Um, and then also privately discuss who that trusted adult is going to be. So you can come up with a plan together as to who you will be talking to. Um, and remember that this is highly confidential, highly sensitive information, and that we want you to keep it private between you and that student and not gossip and talk to other friends about it, only that trusted adult. And then ultimately in the end, if you cannot convince your friend to come and talk to an adult in the building or outside of the building, you must report it yourself without your friend. Just as we promised, we said that there would be numbers that you could call, their hotline numbers that are out there that are available. Those numbers are right now on your screen. Realize that our responsibility, what we would prefer, is that you would talk to someone here at school, but we also know that you're not at school 100% of the time. Because you're not here 100% of the time, we want to make sure that you have the resources available to you that you can call and report at any time. And those are the numbers that are on the screen. No matter what, we want students to get help and to know about the many options that are available as they take the first step towards the help and the support that they need. So once again, the numbers and the hotlines are available on the screen. And always remember that we post each and every one of these videos to our YouTube channel, the Snyder High School channel that's for Panthers Paws 2.0. You can find it on YouTube. You can look at it anytime. You can watch this video a number of times on your own. We would appreciate the views. But when you get to this screen, feel comfortable pausing it and dialing the phone if you need help. Okay, so students, um, remember that we're a family. Mr. Hisong has made that very clear that we are a family and we're here to take care of each other. Um, so we want you to be safe and we want you to advocate for each other or um, for a f we want you to advocate for yourself or for each other. Correct. We want you looking out for each other. We've talked about family before. We've talked about responsibility to family. We don't let someone suffer in silence. If we know that there's an issue, if we know there's a problem, we need to look out for our friends and we need to look out for our fellow family members. Remember, it's important that we as a family stick up for one another. We should never be in a situation where we see something happen or we know that something has happened and we haven't told someone. There are adults all around this building that have been trained to support you, to help you, and to guide you. Teachers, at this time, we know this is a difficult topic. We know that talking about child abuse and child sexual abuse is not always comfortable. That's why we have Aaron's Law, and that's why we're doing this video today. 
please take the time to connect with your students and talk to your students and give them time to talk to you. If they have questions, please do the best you can to answer their questions. If you're not comfortable answering their questions, realize that there's a guidance counselor available at all times. Ladies and gentlemen, we need you to make sure that you are at your best when you get to Snyder High School each and every day. If you're suffering from child abuse or child sexual abuse, you cannot be at your best. That's why we're here to help you, we're here to serve you, and we wanna make sure we do what's best for you. Okay, so students, just remember, Mr. Hisong has spoke to us a lot about the fact that we are all a family here and that we take care of each other. So we want to make sure that you are safe, um, that you are an advocate, whether you're an advocate for yourself or for a friend. Thank you. Thank everyone for watching and have a great day. Thank you.